Okay, here we are. Um, today I'm having Kelly. Um, we are Pure Joy Parent Coaches. We met through the program, so I am so excited to have her on. Today we're talking about Enneagram. Um, but my podcast is about ways that we find ourselves, like back to ourselves in motherhood. And um, I just love all the different personality tests and learning things like that. So I know that all of my listeners love to learn new things and try to figure out a little bit more about themselves so they can be in relationship to <clears throat> the people in their family. So I am going to have Kelly introduce herself a little bit and just tell us like, what the heck Enneagram is, just like a brief, like a yeah. brief thing. Yeah, long word, weird word. Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> this is fun. This is so fun to be spending an afternoon just like chit-chatting, chit-chatting, talking Enneagram. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, Um, even before I started doing it for work, it was just like mostly annoying people who weren't interested. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So Kelly Weed. Um, yeah, I am a coach. I coach primarily with the Enneagram. Personally, have been using it for personal work, inner work, and growth and development since 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so one of the reasons that I was even drawn into parent coaching was because I was working with clients who were really into the Enneagram, could kind of sense in themselves that it was powerful and and it was you know something that could be useful within their families um and I can't tell you how many times I had people saying can you please type my kid like mm -hmm. tell me how type my kid is right um and I can say more about that but I, I think a phrase that you just said um coming back to ourselves I think that is the gold that I found in the system and that's you know and this is all in line with my personality type, I can be so scattered, right? Onto the next thing and the next thing and like consuming this. And now I want to read this book, but now this parenting book and now this strategy, right? Um, and so it's something for me to stay with the system this long. And I think that that is a statement of like how deep it is once you really start to get into the work. And also just that it's one of those systems that, that that phrase that you just said, coming back to yourself, right? The Enneagram is a typology system, right? And so some people would put it in the same category with like Myers-Briggs, right? Or Strengths Finders or the DISC inventory, like any of these things that even in corporate settings you might take to figure out mm -hmm. how am I different than other people? Because I think we all have an innate sense that there are ways that we are we are all the same, and there are ways that we we are very unique. Mm -hmm. um, and what I love about the Enneagram is that, you know, it's sort of, it, it's a map that can show you, if you really want to see it, how the truest parts of you exist and how on top of those truest parts of you, right? You There's been this sort of personality mask right? This, this crystallization of these patterns that for very good reason, you just kept doing that same pattern. And over time, I think what comes out of that is that you almost robotically become these patterns, right? Like it, it happens for good reason. I have so much compassion for why I do it, why you do it, right? But you're sort of living out these patterns rather than living from the true is true in you. Um, and I think, yeah, more than anything else, the Enneagram just cut right to the heart um, of showing me what the path home would look like. And I don't think that all people take it. I think for some people, it can just be fun to like, you know, post a meme or at a cocktail party. Oh, you're such a no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see uh, that on my um, yeah. couple of friends on Instagram. Yeah. Those, you know, the type the type memes and things like that. It's really fun. I remember at an early age, like reading my horoscope and magazines and really wanting to understand myself a little bit better. 
Um, so I've I've done I've done a deep dive into astrology and human design work, but Enneagram has always kind of been like this periphery for me. I I've taken different tests and gotten different numbers all over the place. And I know you say it takes some time to dive into it, but I like what you said back to your home. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you are answering those questions, right, those tests out of your conditioned responses, you're going to get a different answer, right? Then if you're kind of working through some things with a coach like yourself. Yeah. Well, and the idea is like the personality isn't bad. Like these are crystallized patterns. One way when I'm working with people, I sort of discuss it as like a rut in a road. It's just the path you've always taken. Mm -hmm. and you had good reason for it and so yeah one of my early teachers um I did a year-long cohort and um I applied to be in this cohort back in 2018 with Suzanne Stabile who I, I think I've had a couple of people reach out to me because I think she was on the Glennon we can do hard things podcast recently um so I did this deep dive in this mentorship program with her over a year. And one of the things that she talked to us was about um, when you start, like what, the Enneagram is so powerful in how it helps you observe yourself. Mm. Right? Non-judgmental observation. There I go again. Like we could freeze frame right now and I could like, it's, and if I had a highlighter on the screen, I could show you my pattern in progress. <laughs> that, like all these years working with it. And of course my pattern's here, keeping me safe. Right. Mm -hmm. It's making sure that I can do the things that it thinks I'm here to do. Right. And so it's not, I think what I can bring into coaching all the time is a little bit of playfulness. Like we're not, we're not trying to shame ourselves for these personality patterns. Mm -hmm. you know, she, so, so one of the powerful quotes that came out of that time is she said, look, when you're hard on yourself, the first thing that rises up to defend, to defend you is personality. So if what I'm looking to do mm -hmm. is like relax, tap into something deeper, give myself permission to show up the way I always have, sure, or to try something different, then I can't be defensive. I can't be harsh. Mm -hmm. like, it's not just that gentleness sounds good. It's that it really is the only way that these patterns are going to let themselves be seen and let themselves be like toyed with is if we can bring just a lot of gentleness to like, yeah, this is what I do. This is how I take care of myself. And if I can stay curious right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot, there's a lot in what you just said. Cause I, you know, finding your own is what my podcast is all about. And, and my coaching, you know, own in the home, right. This, this inner peace that we all have that we kind of lose along the way and we have to come back to it but that the words that you used observation and curiosity yeah those two words just speak to me so much because it's this ability to kind of um come outside yourself and that like the eagle on the perch like just watching yourself from the outside and that takes a lot of practice, right? Like mindfulness, meditation, um, all the things, yoga, whatever you do that you enjoy doing to develop that practice because a lot of us didn't do that as children at all. We were very mental, you know, it's our, our cultural, you know, to be in the mind. So um, I was going to ask you about mm -hmm. this part about getting to the heart because I know you talk about the different parts in Enneagram that there's the mind is it the mind the heart I'm going to butcher it but you can tell us about that like how um this series that I'm doing here Om is where the heart is mm. like there's all these different practices and one might work one better for another Enneagram might be your thing I'm displaying lots of different options in this series, Om is where the heart is. So like, how do you, how would you say Enneagram, Enneagram speaks to coming back to the heart? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I love what you just said. Actually, I kind of want to steal it, Tanya. I'll try to <laughs> but I'm like, I don't think you can get to the heart. I love that Om is where the heart is because I don't know that you can get to the heart without the body. Yeah. And that's kind of a new piece that I'm bringing in. I've had, you know, some training, even just recently, I, I could geek out and talk to you about all this, like, object relations theory and all these psychological theories that you can overlay on top of the Enneagram that me as a head type, I just like, oh, love it so much. That Yeah, I love it so much. And yeah, that's as what you said, there's head type, heart yeah, type. Yeah, yeah. And maybe that's good to back up for a minute and just anybody who hears this and like mm -hmm. really doesn't know, I don't even know if that I answered your first question of like what the Enneagram is. It is a, it's a sy system and it has a symbol mm -hmm. and it symbol looks kind of witchy and like freaks out all your friends who <laughs> get freaked out by things that look at it, right? But what's beautiful about it, there's all this like beautiful math in it and it's nine types. So it gets divided into threes, all these different ways, mm -hmm. right? And one of the primary ways it gets divided into three is the use of the three centers. And so one of the places I've been the most fascinated is like, yeah, there's the Enneagram, but the place where I've sort of made my way to and love to stay in is the Enneagram plus, right? So, so when you get into thinking about the three centers, that goes back to like Plato, right? I mean, these, this is, this is not the Enneagram. This is just wisdom that it goes to neuroscience where we now know. Mm -hmm. you have brain cells in your heart and your gut like they're intermingled mm -hmm. and so the Enneagram you know when you had uh Ichazo come along and Naranjo and some of these guys who brought the modern Enneagram into the zeitgeist overlaying these psychological principles it's like you have a core type and your core type rests in one of those centers it's like mm -hmm. you know I, I'm a head type and so my center of gravity, I have a body, I have a heart, my center of gravity that will always come back to the head, meaning the strategies I think will keep me protected. Like, and if we, if you played back this video and took off the sound, you would see you sitting here right now. Right? <laughs> and then when I talk, you would literally see all the energy go up into my head. Mm. It just is like, this is not the right way. That's not the, like, like there's no right way. And it just is, it's, it's like useful information to notice that, huh, okay. So this is the center that I rely on. And I, I love what you said earlier about, do you think there's a bias toward headiness and mm -hmm. logic and, and use overusing the mind? I also think at the same time, we're underusing the mind because I don't mm -hmm. think we're fully exploring the mental center and all that it can do. Mm -hmm. But coming back to what you just said, um, I envision these centers almost like a, and I got this from Josh Levine, like almost like a, a collapsing telescope. Mm. And I think without many people who start to do inner work, whether it's the Enneagram or something else, we'll find that until they're in their bodies, they're not making real contact with mm -hmm. the heart or the head. Yeah. Until you have that foundation of mm -hmm. I can sit in silence checking in with my inner observer, mm -hmm. sensing, like using the language of the body, like sensing, which is sometimes softer than thoughts can be, right? Mm -hmm. Like attuning to my bodily sensations, attuning to, you know, the heart's not just for feeling. This new course that I'm teaching, I'm so excited about is like, what does it actually mean to be in your heart? The heart, if we think about the way it develops, is like, um, I think of it as like pea pie. Like mm -hmm. you've got bakes, yeah. And you remember yeah. those sweet early days of like playing pea pie. Yeah. The heart is this called peekaboo. Pea pie, no, no. <laughs> pea pie, no. pea pie my granny would say, but peekaboo. Yeah, peekaboo. <laughs> but it's like, I want you to see me. Mm oh my gosh, I got a little freaked out. I don't know if I want you to see me, right? But I want you to see me like the mm -hmm. heart center is that place where we're like noticing how we're noticed. Yeah. Where we're noticing when we feel connection and when we don't. And I think until we can untangle the way those centers get all scrambled until I can like be in my body and be right here with me, mm -hmm. there's not much hope that like, I'm really seeing you see me right now. Right. 
that I'm able to offer you the gift of like seeing you with my heart open. The senses, like, yeah. Yeah, that that ability to feel with somebody, right? And not just be in the head. And that's what I love so much about Pure Joy, the, the safe seat practice that we have, the foundational practice, that first step of sensations. Mm. Um, I, I felt like I was doing it before coach training, but it just went to a whole new level, right? When you get into the, the different pieces of sensation in your body, mm. heat, you know, quality of the sensations, it really the depth of sensation that some of us have gotten away from. Um, and some of us have not, some of us live in that space. Right. Um, and that's why I feel like probably I'm more of a heady type of person as well. Cause it takes some developing some practice some space for it. Yeah. 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 And well, and, and again, it was sort of coming out of all of this Enneagram teaching and training. Like if I were going to put this into the world, how would I start? And there's just, there's something about like picking up an intro to the Enneagram book and like reading a bulleted list that does not resonate with me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, yeah, you're going to find stuff in that bulleted list that resonates. I think you're going to take a test and it's going to be like the old bot magazine quizzes and that like, that'll be fun or that'll be but it's very different than experiencing. So again, if I had a chart right now and you were looking at all nine numbers, there are three body types. There are three heart types. There are three head types, mm -hmm. but also like you have each one of those centers. Right. And it's my belief that in each of those centers, as they're functioning, even right now, sit on this call, you have a style, mm -hmm. right? Which means shining the spotlight on that style. We can kind of learn a lot about what's my strategy here? What's my pattern? Yeah. Because a type seven style in the head is doing a very different thing than type six. And so even if I'm a core body type, right? Even if I'm a nine, tapping into what what is the style of my seeking orientation, right? Like mm -hmm. when I go up into my head and I'm trying to figure out like what, how then shall I live? Which way should I go? How do I know? How do I trust orientation? Yeah, it's really different. Same deal with body types, right? Even as a head type, yeah. if I'm holding my body center like an eight, then you'd be sitting here right now experiencing, right? A, a push from me in the boundary center. Mm -hmm. But it's very it's different. So yeah, <laughs> there's so much I want to ask, but I know this is part of your course. So I probably just need to come to your course, right? <laughs> you just need to sign up, Tanya. You just need to just tell, go ahead. Tell yeah. us, tell us like when, tell us the details of your course and like how to find you because I'm like ready to ask you all these questions about my kids and all this, that, and the other, and how do we interact? So I think it's time for you to just tell us like where to find you and this new course you have. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the new course would be really, I mean, it would be um, a great place for people who are brand new to the Enneagram because we're starting with the building blocks. We're starting with the three centers and it's just going to be an exploration of what do I even mean when I say body center? Mm -hmm. Right. So it would be, and it's going to be, it's going to be an experiential course. Like what was way more interesting to me was not something you could find in a book, but like doing practices on these calls to tap into and experience like you were saying, right? I thought I was meditating or something different when I got into a certain style of being in my body. Like mm -hmm. there were new things I could notice. I just think that's really hard to do without support. When you don't know, right? It's really yeah. hard to do. It's hard to do without support. And guidance. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is a way I learn. Yeah. The, the, the kinesthetic learning that's, that's the way and how, and not realizing you can do it in an online course, right? Yes. Like it can happen. We've experienced yeah. it. So. And not realizing that you need, cause I, I, you know, when I was working with some friends and they were helping me kind of shape what it would look like community was a bit, just from the beginning, it was a big part of it for me because I think again, 
as moms and as women, like thinking we have to do it on our own, mm -hmm. right? They have to read all the books and I have to, like, and I'm in it, I'm in it by myself. Like it's, and then I'm like, if I'm with other people, it's only to like compare, how are they doing? How am I doing? Rather than to have this supportive community, you know, where, right? Where we can all like relax enough to bring the kind of open mind and curiosity that you need to look into these spaces. So I'm going to keep the first group small. It's my first time teaching it this way. So I'm going to keep the first group small, but we're going to start on September 3rd. Um, it's every other Sunday. So starting on that date and then two weeks after that, and then to give a two week break in between for people to be working with that center. Right. So, so for us not to just be like writing down stuff, I would say in that notebook, but to be checking in online with other people, we're going to have a group set up online where you can like check in and post if you want. And, mm -hmm. you know, there'll be resources there to support. Yeah. But just to have this community exploration of, of each of those centers and then by the end to be able to start talking about what do I notice in my home? Like now that I, I'm clear yeah. on what I notice in me and now that we've kind of gotten rid of some of the interference of that, now I can really start to look around my home and see, wow, like my home has a body center feel to it too. Like my home yeah, has a home. way that we hold energetic boundaries here, which is different than when relatives come stay, sometimes that is not, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. it's just the noticing of like, that's not their style. They're needing yeah. a little more. This is a different energy. Yeah. 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 This is the type of course that I love sharing because it's, you get the, you get the theory and you get the practice and then there's the application because you're bouncing it off of of everybody and, and going out into the real world and coming back and reflecting. So thank you so much for sharing the course. Um, yeah, no, you're welcome. And if for people who want to sign up, mm -hmm. uh, I can, you know, we can put it on, write it on, but insight.com is my website. That's E-N-N, -N, not I-N, but E-N-N, -N, like the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. Insight.com, there's a link there. I'm okay. not super active on social media. I've not figured out how to be a mom and <laughs> a person and have social media so yeah not really trackable but um yeah, yeah we'll, put the, we'll put the links in the um in the show notes so thank you so much yeah um, this is really fun Tanya yeah and hopefully I'll see you soon yeah <laughs> bye for now